In this video, we're going to talk about something you won't have seen from any other cutting tool manufacturer. It's actually Y axis parting. I'm joined by Lee Kendall of Sanford Carment, and he's going to talk us through it. So, Lee, it sounds dead simple, doesn't it? But it hasn't been done before. No, I mean, it's taking all the principles we have from the QD parting off system, but actually, we tilt it through 90 degrees. Um, QD is already a very reliable system. Uh, we've discussed in some of the other technical corners we've discussed. And you can see here, this is the x-axis parting. You can see where the cutting forces are, are going. And this is just what we're used to seeing in, in, in machining. And of course, now with the advent of more multitask machines, um, with, they have a y-axis. And we also have the um, CNC lathes now more and more are being sold with a y-axis on as standard. And of course, by using y-axis parting off, we can take advantage of these features of the machine tools. Yeah, why, why was it invented? Well, if you can see from this picture, you can see how the cutting forces are acting into the blade. So this red part is actually where all the cutting forces are acting. And of course, that makes it more unstable. But if we then put the forces down the blade, you can see the difference here. It gives you six times the blade stiffness by using the y-axis to part off. Yeah, six times. And again, when you're parting and grooving, that is the number one variable, really. The, again, the harmonics, the, the dampening. So. You talked about it six times. Is that, is that, that's correct. That's when compared to your other products. Yeah, for the same overhang, you get six times the bending stiffness. So, of course, what that allows you to do then is to push the feed rate. So you can get better chip control. The tool's in contact with the material less time. And it gives you a much, much stabler um, parting off experience. And you can hear that in the sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you see this in action, the difference in sound is unbelievable. If you run it at the same data, it's almost silent and you can push it to two, three times the cutting data without any noticeable difference in the sound. Mm -hmm. When we say cutting data, are we talking surface speed or, or, or feed rate? Well, a little bit of both. Because it's more stable, we can actually push the speed a little bit more and we can use harder grades because you're not getting the vibration that you can traditionally get when you're doing these longer overhangs using the x-axis. So, of course, when you look at the tool, it looks a little bit strange, but actually it works extremely well. And that leads me on nicely to programming. Whether I program on the machine or in a CAM system, how easy is it? it at the moment, it's not possible within the CAM systems. We're working with some of the CAM companies to try and get this interface in a good way. Uh, a lot of people are interested in it because they see the advantage. Uh, and for them to be the first, it will be really good. And also we talk with the machine tool builders to try and get a cycle where they can use the y-axis. But actually the programming of it in the EIA ISO function is fairly straightforward. It's a case of just changing a parameter to allow you to use the y-axis to calculate constant surface speed. And then you just change it back afterwards. Once you've done it once, it's, it's fairly straightforward. But of course, the other thing is you're using the y-axis instead of the x to program. So it's, mm -hmm. it, it's slightly different. But we have a lot of examples of code online um, on our website as well. And this, I know this isn't brand new, so you've got examples of manufacturing facilities using this product currently. Yeah, every time we, every time we do an installation of this, uh, we update um, a SharePoint site with, with the code. So for each new machine we do, it's, we, we have examples of code for customers that they can have access to, that they can actually program their machine. So there's, you know, with, with a lot of the machine tools out there, we have existing code that works extremely well. And I can see this in mild steel, great stainless steel, but how does it uh, perform in the heat resistant, you know, the tough, tough materials? This will perform much better than any other system in, in HRSA. So, for instance, we parted off some material in Sweden when we did some testing, and we were at like three times the feed rate we could achieve with normal x axis part off. But this was at 180 millimeters diameter wow. in Canel 718 and we had fantastic tool life. So it allows you to use those harder grades when you've got more overhang because it's so much more stable. So, so this is for anyone with a y-axis, e even on a commodity machine where the y-axis may not have a lot of torque and power. Yeah, I mean the y-axis, that much of the feed force, actually you're not taking mm. much, much um, stroke in the feed. It's more, if, as long as you've got the stroke and, uh, on the axis, then you can part off um, any diameter within that stroke limit. So it's very, very good, very stable, um, and you can go either from the bottom up with on a lathe or from the top down even. Obviously, from from low coming from underneath, it's much better for the chip evacuation. But you're not you're not um, governed by anything like that. It, it works really well in any application. So when we compare the cold cut 
QDY, how does that compare to, to your normal parting system in terms of productivity, time savings? Yeah, well, they're both a stable system, but obviously now we've got more stability in the blade, we can actually push the feed rate a lot more and you can go for longer overhangs. So typically if you're parting off between two spindles, it's, it's a big advantage because you can have the tool out without losing any productivity. So on, on this video you can see here with the QDY on the, on the right, it's already finished. So we're running at three times the feed that you're running up with the x-axis without any loss of stability. And of course it sounds great and you get much better tool life because the insert's in contact with the material less time. So it's a win-win for, for a customer. And this is a C6 Capto. One presumes yep. you've got it for you know for other um, holders as well. Yeah, well, of course, the holder is exactly the same as you have with a QD parting off system. The only thing that's different is the blade. I mean, as you can see from the blade here, it's exactly the same type of blade design, but it's just the inserts tilted <laughs> through 90 degrees. So, of course, all the inserts that go in there are exactly the same. It goes into the same holder. You only have to change the blade and the programming method and then you get all those advantages. Mm -hmm. And the inserts themselves, they come ground and pressed and various grades and geometries again? Yep, you have the exact same um, grade and geometry profile that you have for the QD parting off system. So clever but so simple. Thank you, yep. Lee. Thank you.